I, I just love New York as a city and I love New York's relevance in this show because I've, I've always said New York is so beautiful in its flaws. flying to New York uh, to go to his estranged father's wedding um, where he meets and uh, is picked up by Robin, his uh, step-aunt-in-law-to-be. So, yeah, and I'll leave you to figure out what that means. Um, and it's sort of like what happens in the 36 hours there, there in New York um, and how they change each other's lives in such a quick sort of impactful way, yeah. Even though you might, you know, live in another city, you come to New York, and there is something that there is still beauty that you can find here um, in ways that can feel very different to that of London. I mean, look at it. It's like, unapologetic. Like, isn't it's it? so unapologetic from the people to its history to everything, and I think that speaks volumes within the show itself. Both Robin is unapologetic about some things but there are some things in her life that she's very kind of aware that she doesn't have the answers to um, and that is the same for Duke. Yes. <laughs> he is unapologetic in his joy and his kind optimism. Of optimism. Yeah. If another plate lands on the same one. In Madagascar, Melman puts his head through that the clock. clock. The clock. And then he wears the clock. <laughs> In Madagascar one. Yes. Voiced by David Trump. This show did its first run at a theatre in Northampton. It was called the, the, season. the Season, yeah. And obviously it did really well there and they felt like there was more life that could have existed within the show. And it was reimagined at the Kiln Theatre, which is where Sam and I uh, were became involved within it. And that's how the title Two Strangers Carry a Cake Across New York came about because they kind of wanted to find a way of encapsulating the show in a title that had some degree of ambiguity yeah. and piqued people's interest, but at the same time was not entirely what the show is about. And I find it great that mm. that's the name of the show now. Mm. I think a lot of people kind of were always like, oh, what, what is that? What's that about? It's just about two strangers who carry a cake through New York. Yeah. And I can say yes and still be correct. And I can say no and still be correct. Um, but yeah, when we took the job, we took it for six weeks, thinking it was going to be a nice little run over Christmas. And then... No, here we are. Behind... We somehow ended up in... Behind Brooklyn the Bridge, of baby. Jumbo, sitting in the park overlooking Brooklyn Bridge. I'm not really sure where we are in the life cycle of this show. Um, but even now, I was on the plane flying over here and I was sent script changes to, to you know, and I think that's such a reflection on, on how malleable the piece is and how malleable of a writer Kit and Jim, uh, a creatives Kit and Jim are. They're so, they have such a strong skill at, you know, just changing things that you would think are probably like for now, like set in stone. Um, 
And I think that's sort of like a, it's a logistical ease when it's just about two people and not like you don't have to consider an ensemble of like 30 as well. But um, it's a real privilege to see how it's sort of changing and always evolving. We don't actually see each other um, at all backstage. Yeah. Because if we do, I'm there's a problem. Stage, Sam is on, off stage. When I'm off stage, Sam is on stage for yeah. the three minutes and 26 six, seconds, six seconds that that actually ever happens. Um, but the rehearsal process, we kind of instantly created like an understanding of like, cool, we're doing this. Yeah. And I think that understanding has carried us through rehearsals, shows, previews, extensions, press, everything, mm. New York. Um, a really great kind of understanding of self and also each other. Yeah. Because um, there are days where it's like a weird like telepathy of like understanding that, okay, you need space, cool, that's fine, take your space. And there are days of like a, let's have the biggest kiki, let's laugh for the rest no, of kiki. the day. <laughs> We literally are our roles. Like, he's sometimes the storm to my calm. Yeah. And I am sometimes the calm to the my calm storm. To him. <laughs> um, and then we have moments where it's the complete opposite. Uh, but I think that's the beauty of Robin and Dougal, how they bring out little bits of each other that kind of you didn't expect. Yeah. You know? I've learned a lot from Sam, and Sam's learned a lot from me. It's really fun being here having worked on the show for about 10 weeks. For me, it's such a cool blanket of confidence. Um, and like being here, like I said, like after 10 weeks of doing what I thought was the full run, is very surreal. Knowing that I have six months of broad, gorgeous work to put in again, with the help of the 10 weeks behind me, it's really, it's just so exciting. And it's such a different, it's just a fresh angle. And that's why it's so fun being involved in a production that where you, you play a very comfortable cog rather than seeing the machine from the outside, being part of the machine is really, really fun uh, and really exciting. It's felt like a ladder. Yeah. And like, no one has kind of been left behind on this ladder. We've all kind of moved to the next stage of where the show is going. With together. each other, yeah. together. And a lot of the time there's a clear vision that comes from a very concentrated pool of people and you are just there to execute this vision. And we've been so lucky to be able to kind of walk into a room and have people say, okay, here's the vision, here's the ladder, we're here, come join us and let's see where it goes. Yeah. Just one example, like Kit asked me, w w where are you from? And I live in a village outside of Crawley. I said that and he went, great, we'll put Crawley. And just having that sort of part of me in there is I can't it's so surreal and it might not mean much to an audience member but to me it's like really important uh, and it's not I don't need it in every role but like to have it in this one it's just so fun I feel I feel like I belong in that character because that character now has a piece of me and that's really exciting and it's usually just the work of actors having to be like okay let me become this character I've never known for a case where the character comes to you like and has pieces of you that exist. Yeah, it's really fun. The 4th of April. What's that? Oh, it's pretty No? Our no. first show. Our first show? Is going to be very special because not only is it going to feel like we're kind of revisiting something, it's going to feel like they're a reinvention of something because we know that there is some, to some degree this is new um, to us, but it's also going to feel like we've kind of taken a trip down memory lane. Yeah. So like, I've been here before, but I haven't been here before in this capacity yeah. with you as you now are. Yeah. And effectively we experience that every day. But I think having had a break and having come to New York and spent- 36 hours, we're here, we're here for, for 36 then... hours right now. So I think having had the actual experience of that, I'm really excited to see how that informs our shows going forward. Yeah.
That's Dijon Gift reporting for What's On Stage. Back to you in the studio, Sam Tati. I'm, over, I'm next to you, so that doesn't work. But yes, back to you in the studio. Oh, sorry. I mean, I'm probably already in shot. Um, Sam, signing off from uh, New York.